folks, welcome to Felix the Handyman. You know, I just got this going in a project and ended up with a whole bunch of screws that I got to sort out. But you know what? I was thinking I could take my tape measure, measure them one by one, sort them out. But then the other day I thought, man, there has got to be a better way. So, I created this little item right here. Dimmer control that controls the speed. All you do is take your screws, put them in there, let the machine sort the screws out for you. They have various sizes from one, one and a quarter, one and a half, two, two and a half. It's a lot easier than doing it by hand. These specs are not AutoCAD. They may be a little bit difficult to read, but they give you the general dimensions of this machine. And if you want, you could pause write down all the different dimension sizes and then you'll have something to go by the first part you're going to need is the base the base is you got your wood here 2x4 so you have a slight slope you got a 2x4 and you drilled holes quarter inch holes so that you could run you're adjusting screws all the way through. Okay, you've already drilled the hole for the motor, put the motor through there. You have a dimmer switch, so the dimmer switch will control the amount of vibration you get from your motor. Me, myself, I went to the boneyard and I found a auger that uh, still ran. And I rewired it myself. You want to attach your brace and drill your holes for your adjusting screws. They're a quarter inch. Now we're going to put this little cross member on there. Now that we have the hole for the motor, we'll put the motor in. Now we put the base on the back. We applied a little dimmer switch here so we can control the speed of the vibration. On the old router, I put a tip on there, a piece of all thread, and bent it a little bit, and that gives me a good vibration. The other half of the base, 
is right here. Okay, the reason I call it a base is because this one and this one are both stationary. Now we put the cross member on there. I did pocket holes because I figured, hey, that's cool. That'll be easy. Now, I'll tighten it up. Okay, now that we got most of the base done, we got to put two screws on the bottom right here. I built this whole thing with this little Ryobi drill. Has it from Home Depot? Has the clutch on there so you could do your speed. Has the two speed gearing, fast, slow. Has a little four volt battery on it. And I keep that on my extra charger right here so I got a spare. Whenever this battery goes dead, I just pull it out, put the new one. It's got forward, reverse, and this is the greatest little drill driver you have ever seen, man. Okay, so much for the drill driver. The best feature about this little guy is that when I want to change one attachment to another, all I do is just pop it in there. And boom, locks in by itself. Take it out, pull it forward, change over to a drill, pop that little dude in there. They used to cost $39, but I bet you they're a fortune now. Okay. On to the project. Alignment is critical. So, be sure that you align the bolts properly. Drill the first one through. Snug it down. Have the second one ready. So you can put it in there. Because first, you have to drill that hole. And make sure that you get your alignment all the way across. You're going to find out that... The top one adjusts the top part of your metal, and the bottom one is going to adjust the bottom part of your metal, so that when your screw is hanging, it will be tilted to the right slightly. When it comes to the hole, it will press itself out and eject into your container. Okay, now we got the bolts through there, and we have these nifty little locking nuts. They go on the end of there. You tighten them up to adjust with. On the other side, I have a keeper with a nut on there to lock it and keep it stationary. In between here, we're going to put a spring so it'll be adjustable gap. On top of here, we have a piece of aluminum running 18 inches, and they're both angle aluminum. That's so that the screw will be able to hang down there but there's going to be an offset and this is the big trick between one and the other the other is a little bit taller and one side lower so that when it gets to the point that it has to eject it'll kick out the way that works is that you're going to have this little piece of metal in between the boards and when it reaches a certain slot that's the size that she indicated. It'll just pop out and it'll shoot down the PVC pipe and it'll go into a little collector bucket which will be on the bottom of your PVC pipe and it goes straight down into it. The critical part though is making sure one side is just a little bit higher than the other side. These little elevation screws, you screw them out, and it comes up, screw it in, it goes down. That way you could adjust your elevation. Okay, piece. now you got your aluminum plate cut and mounted, and spaced properly for your three quarter inch tube. Okay, now you got your plate on there. It's time to measure for your cuts. Okay, like this one here is one inch, and you mark it right there. That's where you're going to cut your slot. Okay, now we have our steel plate cut out. There's the one inch. All the way down to two and a half inches. And this plate is interchangeable. So all you got to do is just mount it up there. And you're okay, now to reassemble. You have your spring.
springs. I go on each one of these so that when you tighten with tension, they'll push your board back and allow you to make adjustments. This is your base, okay? And make sure that your base is available. This board here is for adjusting. Then you have your lock nuts and go behind them. Okay, now you're totally reassembled the slider part and to adjust it. There's a few things and you may have to do them your own different ways, but I usually take a long screw, put in here, snug down to it pinches and then back off to it drops. It's got to drop to the second level. There's the second level. You do the same thing on the other side. We got this little nut twister at Harbor Freight. And man, it's a pretty cool little dude, man. It has metric and American. As a whole, it goes through both sides. That way you can tighten a nut that has a stud on it. It only costs a couple of bucks. And it's well worth it. Okay. Now you have the screw down there. On the second part. You notice the angle of the screw. That's where your second adjustment comes in. You could adjust it until the screw starts to point towards the metal. Notice the tip of the screw. You tighten it a little bit more, points towards the metal. Okay. Now once it could track freely down here, down this track, when it gets to the point where the opening is, it'll come shooting out. So you just adjust it. So that when it gets to that point, it has enough angle on it that it falls out by itself. Notice the angle. And this is where all your adjustment comes in. That's why you have two adjusters. One on top, one on the bottom. Obviously, we have enough angle because the screw fell. Use one inch pipe, mark them so they'll match the little grooves on your metal. And you have small receivers that go on the bottom to collect your screws. Okay, now we got the last part in. Cut notches in the PVC pipe. Run a brace across the back and align it with your holes. And on the bottom of there, you have your receiver trays. These little receiver trays get full, then you just take them out, empty them, and put it back in again. Fill her up. And I put a dimmer control on there so I could control the speed of the router. And of course, Here's the track. Let the machine do the sorting for you. It's a lot easier than doing it by hand. You get all the different sizes, inch, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, so on and so forth. All you do is feed it in there slowly. Done deal. Well, you guys have a nice day.